Unlike you, my name is Dylan, and today we're gonna go over the editing breakdown of that transition video I posted last week. So no beating around the bush, let's jump right into it. I think you're gonna be surprised at how little work I actually did on these. So this first shot I think is my favorite shot, and it's actually pretty simple to do. Not much is involved with editing. You can see I just placed this second clip over top, and then what I did was added a, a simple dissolve. But what really sells this is finding a surface that matches from the end of shot one to the beginning of shot two. <clears throat> so here, I didn't want to have it fade into this column because then you would kind of notice. So in order to make it seamless, I waited till the column was almost off. And you can also mask this second shot to make it fit in there a little, little better, but uh, it worked fine as is. So all I did was took the second shot added a little fade and for the fade I chose a uh, highlights dissolve cross dissolve and that just targets the highlights of the second shot so if I take this off you'll see that it kind of uh, it actually blends a little bit better but I think I wanted it to happen a little quicker so that'll have the highlights pop out a little bit more I highly suggest if you do use cross dissolves for different transitions just play around with the different options here because there's quite a lot and then you can also play around with the ease amount so here I can adjust the ease actually I'll just do a little bit more but what really sells it like I said is when they are matching exposures and if they're especially matching textures that's going to help out a lot. So all I did here was back up and I'm tilting the camera up, remembering the speed that I'm tilting up. And that's also important because if on the second shot, I'm tilting up at a faster rate, I would have to slow it down basically so that the end of shot A and the beginning of shot B looks, looks seamless. So just keep the speed the same, try and get something that matches the same exposure at the end of shot A, and then has the same exposure for the beginning of shot B. And then you can also add like a color mask. You'll see Brandon Lee does that sometimes, where in order to make shot A and shot B mix well, he'll add a color mask to help blend those two together. But this one's very easy. This one is actually very easy to do, is mostly an in-camera transition, and I think it looks great. A lot of transitions really are just matching the exposure and the camera movement and the speed, and uh, it helps to blend those uh, seamlessly. This next shot is pretty easy to do. All you're doing is spinning the camera. You're rotating the camera and you want to keep the same speed once again because if your speed is a little off, one, the end of shot A is slower, beginning of shot uh, B is really fast, it's not going to work as well. So here I'm just spinning the camera and rotating down and starting in that same position. And then all I do is I find the point where they are in the same position in their turn. So here, it has uh, the ground about, uh, kind of about vertical, almost vertical. You wanna keep it matched up. So the point that you're motioning from should be kind of the start of where the second shot uh, begins. This one is also similar to that first shot in that we are just tilting up and we are using the uh, the sky, the same color and, and exposure, uh, hopefully, to blend those two together. So let me move this over here and I can extend this and you can see kind of what I did. So I rotate it up and I didn't I didn't keep it for too long because had it been just floating in the sky for an extended period of time, people would have got bored. So I had to make it quick. So we go up, the fade starts, and then it comes back down. Now, I don't know if you noticed when you watch this, but this isn't perfect because you can see the there's a cloud here that doesn't match with this sky. It shows up there. That is kind of what ruins the transition for me. And I was a little bummed when I got into the editing room and saw that. So if you have a, a perfectly blue sky and you get the second shot to have also the frame that's perfectly blue sky, it's going to make it uh, it's going to make it seamless. Also, something you can do that'll help out is if you transition into the sun and then come out where the sun is in a different location. And that's probably a better way to do it because that keeps your viewer focused on one subject. But so, yeah, up you come down. And uh, then I'm just rotating around him, but I had my autofocus set too quick. It should have slowly focused on her here, but instead it was a quick transition. This next shot isn't as much of an in-camera transition as some of the other ones we did, but it's pretty simple. It's just a simple mask. And this actually isn't perfect. And I'll show you 
uh, when we go frame frame by frame why it's not that perfect but all the mask is if you don't know what a mask is essentially you're cutting out part of either shot a or shot b and using it to overlap on top of the other shot and that helps to create kind of a seamless blend between those two shots so you can see what i mean here if i turn off this draw mask you can see that this is the original shot all i did was essentially cut out everything to the right of this tree as it's coming into frame you basically have to mask that cutting out so as the tree goes by you move those keyframes and that helps to make it look a little bit more seamless but um i definitely didn't do mine perfect but so let me show you kind of what this looks like and if you already know how to mask you can skip this point but um so let me take this off i'll extend this here just so you can see the end of shot a and the beginning of shot b and let me turn off this mask so this is the shot and i had him just walk in front of a tree it could be like i mentioned anything that covers the frame fully or even partially there's ways that you can go about doing that so all you're going to do is find the point that the tree enters and i usually don't like to start from the beginning usually i start like kind of like in the middle and then what i'll do is i'll add a mask so if i delete this and I just add a draw mask. All you're gonna do is outline that thing that's coming in front of the frame. I'm gonna uh, take off this part. I'm gonna make it a little more simple than it was here. We just have that coming across and then you kind of extend out because you know you know that this shot is sliding from left to right and you'll notice that it automatically cuts out what uh, is going to be to the right of the tree what i like to do is switch it to original so you can see what you're doing here because you don't want to try and keyframe when it's like this it'll be too difficult to find that edge so keep it on original all you're gonna do is use your transform or control points. You're gonna click all of these, and then you're gonna go frame by frame. I'm sorry, not frame by frame, maybe skip 10 or so, and then move it. And because you pressed all those keyframes, it is gonna save. So you'll move it here, and you'll see that uh, this is now cutting into the frame. You wanna extend this because this is the uh, rest of shot B. You want this to be fully on the frame and not have shot a showing up so let's do that we'll skip a few and we just have a little bit here we'll go like that this is a very rudimentary and you'll see that it's not perfect so what you'll do after keyframing is just go back frame by frame and then you can adjust i think this is about where we started so let's skip 10 or so frames nope that's fine We'll just make it very simple. The slower something goes by, the more perfect the mask has to be. If something's going by very quick, you can get away with a, a pretty shit mask. Okay, boom, very, now let's take that off fully. So that's a very basic mask. All you do is switch to composite, and then you're going to uh, put that over top here. So you wanna find that point that it starts. I think we, the mask starts here. I mean, that's, and I want the transition to happen, let's say right here, All right? So I know the tree's coming in here, and we'll just cut this off. So I'll press option and left bracket. Okay, so that's really bad as far as the mask goes. And something that you can do is feather the mask and that's gonna make it look a lot better. So if I come here and it feather either to the left or to the right, depending on where you drew your mask, it's gonna help smooth that out and make it seem more realistic. What you can actually do is add some directional blur and that's gonna help that motion of this tree coming across the frame to look like it's truly something that's coming in front of the frame here. So pretty simple to do, the, the more points you make and the more that thing moves across the frame, the harder it's gonna be for you in the editing room. But if it's a straight line, re it's really simple to do. The next shot is a whip pan. And this is something that is done a lot in films. This is also very simple. It doesn't need editing at all, actually, because you're using the motion blur from shot A to shot B as kind of your transition. So I actually, I forgot to shoot this in the store. So this was after the fact, but what you're doing is you're whipping the camera a certain direction. It can be up, it can be down, it could be to the side, kind of like that, it could be that rotate that we did. And then you are starting from wherever you ended up. So if I went from straight to right, then you would start on your left side for shot B. So you're whipping in from left to right and then you finish out the shot. Essentially, you're just using that motion <clears throat> and you're finding the cut right where there's a lot of motion blur. So you'll see in between here, this is the cut and it's pretty seamless. Boom, 
This next one definitely took the most work and it's something that I learned from Brandon Lee. He's done it in a lot of his films and I actually created a in-depth tutorial if you want to see me break down this transition specifically because uh, I'm not going to go through every keyframe I made but I will show you how it's done here. So all you're doing is you're pulling back from shot one into shot two. You're pulling back from shot two and you want to find something that you know you can mask out and come out of and then you want to get generally pretty close to that thing. So here I chose his glasses and I knew I was going to cut out his glasses, put shot A in the glasses and then um, basically have the camera motion reveal the rest of shot B and then also something that you should do to sell that transition is scale down the first shot. And that's something that I see a lot of people not do. They just have the uh, shot stay the same size instead of scaling it down. Because if you imagine, if you're walking away from say someone holding a phone, the thing that you're looking at that's playing on the phone doesn't stay the same size, like doesn't get bigger. It's getting smaller as you're pulling away. And so ideally to make it more realistic, you do the same for this. So this shot's simple, right? You're just pulling back. And then this second shot, you're finding the point where uh, it's almost covering the whole frame. So what I did here, if I go to the original shot and then I turn off my mask, yikes, let me reset the position. This was the shot, any closer and uh, it wouldn't focus because my minimum focusing distance is to here. So what I had to do was scale in, I think it was 400%, right? So I scale in 400%. Let me turn off the mask and this is what I have. The reason it works is because I scale in a little bit more from the start. So you want to kind of have the whole thing that you're masking out. You want to have it uh, almost not seen and then you're going to keyframe that. So I keyframe the shot till at the very end it's about at 100. You see it's at 107% here. So it's pulling back and then boom. And I actually think I made an adjustment so it kind of stops here as he takes off the glasses. But so all you're doing is the same thing that we did for the tree. You are using the draw mask to draw out whatever you'd like. And remember the more points, the more you kind of move from side to side, the harder it's gonna be. So you press the control points and you go frame by frame or every three frames or so, and then you move it smaller. Now with this, all I did was I adjusted the scale and I just pulled this scale down and then made adjustments where I needed to. So uh, as I skipped a couple frames, I lower the scale, skip a couple frames, lower the scale. And if I were to turn off the size change here, you'll see what I mean. So you see how it doesn't look as seamless because he's staying the same size. And so what you can do to help sell that, at least for me, I think so, is use that scale. So I, uh, had it start, let's see. So I had it start right about here. So it's at 100% and then I start to scale down from this point. So I, I go about maybe five frames or 10 frames over and then I bring this down. So like I'll bring it down even more. And the idea is you wanna look at your subject and generally keep them the same size within that masked out frame. So I'll skip 10 and I see he's, he's about cut off at waist by the sunglass and I keep going. I do the same thing and you'll see I didn't position it right. He starts to move over, but, uh, but that's okay. It was just for, for an example. And then the next thing you could do to help sell it even more is to, to fade out because obviously you can't go forever with the mask. Like had I masked out even longer, it would have been such a pain right here. Then I would have to use the distort tool to distort it on the glass. And so you can save yourself a lot of editing and it actually looks fine if you change the opacity on this second shot. So that's what I did. Actually, I'm sorry, I didn't change the opacity on the second shot, it was this shot. So I started the fill opacity, which is basically, uh, allowing you to see that mask and I just lowered it. I think I started here and then lowered it a lot until it totally faded out here. And then you can see the original shot because I did not want to mask at this point. It would have been a pain. And then of course, add a little bit of motion blur. I think this is motion blur from Mark Webster and that's going to help that motion backwards and stuff seem more realistic. And it also covers the motion within this frame and this frame since it's over top, it, uh, it works kind of like an adjustment layer. So it finds the motion in the shot and then adds that blur to it. And this is what that looked like. 
So it looks fine. I mean, it definitely could have used more work. Had I used that in a film or something, I would have taken a lot more time to perfect that. But for this example, I think you get the point for the most part. This next one is almost the same as some of the other ones we've done in that you're matching the end of shot A, the beginning of shot B via the exposure and the motion. So uh, something that was pointed out in the comments was that my shadow shows here. And this was a huge bummer because uh, I actually have left Vietnam. Right now I'm visiting my family in Las Vegas. And so I couldn't retake this shot. And that's something you have to look out for is, are you being seen in the shot in any way, whether that be reflection or in the shadow, like in this instance. But so all I did here, same motion. I'm kind of like roller coaster smooth, uh, tilting down into the ground and then you do the same motion here and uh, my fault for not showing myself lifting the camera up here i needed a wider angle so you're just pulling up so let me show you this so you want to find the point that the motion and the composition is kind of the same here so i didn't want to make you guys wait for too long so right about i think it was here you can cut and delete that. And then the same thing. So that motion was here and it was unfortunately right where the shadow was. So uh, you would go like this and that doesn't look that seamless, right? You can still see the cut. If you take out the fact that you can see my shadow, you can still see that cut. So what you do is just throw that over top, maybe extend it out since you have it over top, and then you add that uh, simple cross dissolve, which is very simple transition, but a great way to, to blend an in-camera transition together. Nope, so obviously that was too soon. So we'll delete that, we'll extend this out, and we'll bring this back here. Here's a little tip. So when you have this, this is basically putting this clip into the secondary storyline and uh, it kind of locks it. It's kind of annoying. So what you can do is press Option, Command and Up and that's going to release that. Okay. Rotating. Looks a little bit better, but it looks like I need to scoot this forward a little bit more. So let's try right about there and then I'll add a little bit of a dissolve. Boom, okay, there's that. Skip the fact that I messed up with the shadow. This is something you could do that's very easy. And I would say it's the same technique for a lot of these. Have the end of this first shot match the beginning of this second, whether that be via color, exposure, uh, movement, or composition. And this next one is via composition. And then you're adding a little bit of uh, directional blur. So this was the shot. Boom. It's essentially a match cut, and instead of the straight cut, you're using a blur transition, which you can actually just find in your blur transition folder. So you would go to directional blur and add that on top. In the past, I used to make an adjustment layer and then create my own, but I found that this worked uh, just fine. So all you're doing is you want to have your subject in the same location and in the same, uh, generally the same size from the end of shot A to the beginning of shot B. Because if I'm off, and I was off initially, you'll see that I actually scaled in here. So if I pull this out and say reset my parameter, this isn't gonna work. It doesn't really, I mean it works kind of, but it doesn't work the same. And that's because it's not in the same position. It You wanna trick the eye into thinking that it's one shot in order to make it seamless. And doing this doesn't do that. I hope I explained these well enough. I know I stuttered and said a lot of ums, and I just hope I made my point succinct and clear enough. If I didn't, please shoot me a comment below. Press the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this. And if you wanna see part two, also shoot me a comment letting me know that you do. Hope you guys have a great day, and I will see you next time.